everybody. Like I said, welcome back. This is Real Talk with Minister J. Renee. And today on today's show, I am, hey, we're just going to do just that. Have some real talk. I have a guest in studio with me here in Louisville, uh, Kentucky uh, for today. And this is a very, very special guest. And although he wears many hats, um, some people call him Master Sergeant Williams. I can't tell you what I call him, but let me just tell you, he is my son. So for Real Talk today, we are going to talk about real issues. And I am going to let him be him. And if I got a deal and go to therapy afterwards, it's okay. This is real talk. And so uh, today's guest, everybody, is let me introduce my son, Mike, Michael Williams. Mike Williams is more popularly what he's known as. He is a wonderful father, a wonderful husband. He is in the he's active duty military and he wears so many different hats. And he has just been awesome for so long. And listen, he, in this area, is like his mom. He's just real talk. And so who else to have on your show than somebody who does real talk in real life every day other than your own blood? So here we go. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mom. <laughs> um, so, And we're going to have fun because we're, we're us. And so... Uh, we agreed that today's uh, question was going to be, why are millennials leaving the church? And we're going to leave that open because I'm going to let him do his thing. We have not practiced this. Uh, and if I have to swell up my shoulders and be a big girl, I'm okay with that. So, Mike, without further ado, what do you think from your perspective, from what you see, you being a millennial... <laughs> Everybody, he's a millennial. I have a son that's a millennial. Yeah. What do you think? Give me your, your opinion. Well, one, appreciate you inviting me on your show, and uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, I, you know, I can't really answer that question as an expert, but I can only um, derive my opinion from my experiences. Um, and so, from my experience, uh, you know, I think some of the traditions of church have become um, not so inclusive. Right, like there's a, a, a cliquish type of mentality that I felt like I grew up in in the culture of church, where it didn't feel like everyone was included, um, and so for that those type of reasons, you know, you don't feel the comfort. I think that church should bring to certain people, um, and I think a lot of people who grew up in those type of environments, you know, kind of strayed away from not God, but church. You know? Okay, so tell me some more about that because that's important. And I think that a lot of times people get this mentality that, oh, they leave church, they're leaving God. And so um, tell me some more about not leaving God, you know, just the church. I think, you know, there's there's ways you can have a relationship with God that um, doesn't mean, you know, you're at church every Wednesday, every Thursday, every Sunday, Sunday, Sunday school, uh, first service, second service, after talk. Um, and it just felt like, all right, um, you know, where is there time to, you know, be a kid and, and kind of grow up where you're not stuck at church talking about God and then seeing that perspective of where people um, were God at church and then you see them, you know, elsewhere and they're a whole different person. And so you start to come up with, you know, is that person being a hypocrite or is that person, does that person have to act a certain way in church and then, you know, go out into the world and be someone totally different? Why can't you be the same in both areas? And so I feel like if you love God, then, you know, be who you are. And there's no, um, there's no acting need to be done when you're just yourself. And if God accepts everyone, why do I have to put on the act to satisfy people that I don't want to talk badly about me? Um, I think that that's kind of uh, where you get that tension to where, you know, I don't want to play. I don't want to play church. I don't want to be someone I'm not just to appease people that sit next to me at church. Wow. So, um, ooh, talking about, because y'all know I'm the one who raised him. So everything he says about church means this is how much I had him in church when he was growing up. Um, uh, and, and by the way, in all of that, 
I want to say that he really is a believer. And this man can pray. He can pray the presence of the Lord in the room, in the atmosphere, in the environment. He is all of that. Uh, and I can attest to that. Um, and I think, you know, when he was growing up, everybody knew I was churchy. But, you know, uh, recently, you know, different family events. So if I'm ever gone for family, it's, you know, mostly him. And they'll be looking like, oh, you know, Renee's going to pray. No, Renee's not. He's the head of this house. And uh, he does that thing. So, um, you know, I, I, I attest to what you're saying. But at the same time, um, I do want to address, OK, you know, about this. What I think I'm hearing is, you know, uh, people trying to be one way at church and then live a whole nother life. Um, outside of that in the witness of those people that they go to church with yeah. right right and so in seeing that how do i determine what's real in god right what's real in church is church really real is it necessary because of you know all of this i see looks like a facade right because um you know out of a out of conversation last night i'm gonna just pick this out a little bit He's like, my mom whooped me for everything. I was like, I didn't whoop you for everything, you know? And although we were laughing, what perception does that give him, you know, um, about, you know, who are you? Are you this mean lady at home and this wonderful Christian at church? So I'm, I'm, I'll come to my house, y'all. I ain't scared. The only thing I can do is make it better. Hello, right? I, I think that. Sometimes what we don't realize, and I think that when we want to dismiss what millennials are saying is because we don't want to hear uh, really how, let me say it this way, how uh, their life was perceived by somebody looking on. Is that whether it's a kid or a teenager or a adult, it's how your life is perceived, not how, you know, what you're, you're going through. And I'm, I'm going to get to that other part the second part of this because well he's an already opened up the can of worms on me but um so like today today what is what would it look like or what should it look like in your perspective to say hey this is how i know church is real you know i, I think you know sometimes in our society period um you know we get caught up in you know Baptist, um, you know, these different types of religion, denominations. denominations and, you know, Muslim and, you know, like all these, you know, everything is, you know, all these religions, you know, come around and mm -hmm. you got these melting pots where people, you know, I inhabit the same workplace as a, a people of different religions and cultures. Right. Right. And the one thing that we do in those type of workplaces is we have inclusion. So your traditions okay. and, your, and who you are um, and who I am doesn't, um, stop us from having a relationship and usually if that you know inclusion is you know okay yeah you're invited to the dance but i'm actually inviting you to dance at the dance right that's inclusion diversity is inviting everybody to the dance right so everybody's at this dance and then everybody's getting the dance and then so in those cultures that you you build you know people feel genuine they feel like themselves they don't feel like they have to act and they, can, and they can feel like you can give them criticism, there's communication flow. And so if you adopt, you know, that mindset and go, hey, hey, in church, you know, when I was there, you know, I wasn't, you know, I got in trouble at school or, you know, I wasn't looked at in the right perspective from maybe some parents. So yeah. now I'm not, I'm not invited to dance. Right, I'm not invited on the dance floor because because you know, of somebody else's perspective, perspective of, of my school. behavior, right? Yeah. But if it, if it's come come as you are, you know, why can't I dance too, right? Why can't you feel that, you know, if you're such a um, um, a symbol of what God wants a Christian to be, why can't you take that and rub off on me in a good way? Ugh. You know, why why is your perspective get away from me and cast me out? or make me feel like I'm not included because you feel, or you make, you've made me feel or come to the conclusion that I'm not worthy to be in your presence at a certain, at, you know, at a certain stint, right? I can't get, I can be close, but I can't get too close because, you know, that'll, that'll be sending the wrong message to who? To God, because that's what we're there for. 
You know? uh. And so I think that those type of culture that you've built, that religion and tradition has built into some um, congregations or some churches have left some people who feel the way I have, who just rather, you know, leave church where church is, but still try to build that relationship with God. You know, and I feel like you can still do that. I mean, the Bible is the Bible and you don't need to sit in church to read the Bible. But there is that fellowship part that every Christian, you know, needs and wants. But then it's also, you know, what type of situation I'm putting myself in to fulfill that part. So how much is it going to cost me yep. to to uh, do this? Right. It, you know, to do what I, I want to do and that I need to do, how much is it going to cost me? How much pain, how much hurt is it going to cost me to come in and do what the Bible says do? Let yeah. us not forsake the fellowship together with one another. How much is it going to cost me? Yeah. Is it is it worth the cost to come in and 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 uh, engage or even affect my family now? Right. Um, in this kind of so, hey, come on, church. Listen, we're here because we want to get this right. We want to reach out. We want people to be included um, in this wonderful. This church ought to be a beautiful experience is what I hear you say. I think so. And, and so when we come to worship, come together to worship, it is worship. Right. It, whatever way we come in to gather, because I think sometimes when we work like I was doing ministry all the time. Uh, when I work, am I working or am I worshiping? Yeah. Or is do I just think because I'm here, then that's considered worship, you know? Uh, and I can be in any kind of attitude or whatever. I'm just doing my job. <laughs> yeah. Is that worship? Is that um, and and that is a I, I have to say it is kind of difficult. You're you want everything to be perfect. Just speaking from the ministry part, you want everyone to have a, a wonderful experience. But at the same time, you have to be mindful that this experience is yours too, right? And that if we are focused on the um, working side, working side, working side, working side, all work and no play. And I think that the work, if it you know brings us together, but we uh, have to work not to offend, to exclude people in the midst of trying to bring people together. Was that a good way to say that or does it need shaping <laughs> i mean i think we have to realize that people go to church for different reasons okay some people want participation points they're just there because going to church on sunday sounds good in life some people have nowhere else to go some people were raised in the church and how do we make everyone feel just as invited as the next wow we'll be right back after this message we're going to finish this talk right up Hi, good people. I'm Karen McKnight, and I'm host of the program, Lord's Temple Fitness. On the program where we will practice yoga, meditation, and breathing techniques so we can tap into the body's own natural healing abilities so that we really can feel better, and I can teach you how. So be sure to join us every week right here or on demand at ssclivetv.com. SSC Live TV. It's TV out. Hey everybody, welcome back. Oh my goodness. This is awesome. I am loving this conversation. I am again with my son, Michael Williams. Uh, Mike Williams. And uh, we are just sitting here having a good time talking about some real talk and so I want to continue it, but this is what I'm going to do, Mike. So uh, this is season three, and on the first two seasons, I tried to bring in a lot of topics that people were struggling with. And sometimes I think that things that we have dealt with in our past, um, like hurt and shame, come with us when we come into the church. And even when we get saved, you know, people think, oh, I'm saved and that's it. And right. I'm not, and so sometimes there's a tendency to push all that stuff behind because I've been washed from it, but I'm still struggling from the consequences of it. Right. So when I come into ministry, I bring that too. And so, um, and I know like uh, it used to be, you know, shameful to try to go get help for those, you know, things that we're suffering from. 
And I mean, like I, I've dealt with um, um, abortions. I've dealt with uh, suicide, uh, LGBTQ, um, grief, uh, all those different topics that we've had in real talk. All those play a part when we when we are converted and come into uh, Christianity. When we are uh, so so here's the thing: we are ch we are changed by God in a process. And so so. Um, this old harsh mother <laughs> who, you know, was hard, but trying to change her life at the same time, you know, unfortunately you had to go through that whole process. And so, and maybe as, as a kid, you didn't understand. And by the way, everything wasn't always bad. I took this kid with me in places. He just, no kids can't be in there, but he was such a good baby. Like, I worked at the uh, Super America back then. And one night I had to work and it was during the week. And I never worked at Super America during the week because it was my night job. And uh, I, I had to come in and I had nowhere. Well, let me just say this. I didn't take my son everywhere. I didn't drop him off anywhere. So I brought him with me. And I was like, okay, now listen, you gotta sit here and you gotta be quiet. And he sat on this little box behind the cash register. And like 80% of the people did not see him. And I think he was sitting there thinking that it was funny because nobody saw him and he was really sitting out in the open. And there's things like that that I had to overcome. But when, you know, at that same time, we would drive from Frankfurt and I'd come back to church every single weekend. And I think the process of growing out of hurt and out of everyday life and into what we think is holy. That's fair, right? I mean, looking back now, I could say what we think is holy. At that time, I was like, okay, you got to just be like this. You got to be like, no, you can't do that. No, I can't. You know, it was it was always very rigid um, in my belief. Would you, would, would you agree with that? I was pretty rigid, maybe. You're pretty dedicated. He's so sweet. Okay, this is him showing love to his mom. So I was dedicated. And um, in my dedication, there wasn't time to deal with issues um, that I I was suffering with. You know, like, um, you know, gosh, I don't, I don't even want to put you on the spot, but here your mom's getting ready to reveal, okay? So things like rape, you know, things that you weren't aware of, you know, that kind of thing. And then that pain that I didn't realize was pain coming up and I'm still in church. I'm still in church. So um, do you do you think that those things or those issues probably pay, played a part in how we worship the people that you're observing? Me, other leaders, that kind of thing. I don't know. Um, you know, not, not from a you know, medical standpoint, you know, we all right. deal with trauma differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it bleeds into different parts of our life. That's true. So you only can observe and know from, you know, the standpoint of what you, you see in front of you. Okay. And so from that standpoint of what I seen in front of me was that, you know, hey, I'm, I see people in, in church who, you know, I might have a better relationship with, but then, you know, right after church, you might hear somebody, you know, from the, front two rows bashing that one person who you have a connection with about who they are as a person and so now you're like wow you know you, you know you're openly talking about you know someone i know who you know i look up to and now you're you know, discrediting them somehow in, in the church and to me that's you know no matter what somebody's dealing with you know that's what you see and that's what you take in um so yeah maybe there's things going on in the background and that leads people to be who they are, but then the people around you that are preserving don't know that. And so you, you're left to deal with, A, your own trauma some way or somehow. And I know probably nowadays there's a lot more resources and yeah, it's a lot of, you know, advertising towards getting help yeah. um, than there ever was. There's a lot of stigmatism around, um, you know, having mental issues or, um, you know, things that we needed as, as, as people to, to do, you know, for self-care um, that wasn't prevalent in that time. Oh. So I do do think that could be a, a contributing factor. However, I'm not here to diagnose right. what 
is you know what the issue was all i can say is what i experienced and let me just tell you i don't know based on what he just said i don't think i have a stand in this fight but uh and and, and i am i do believe presented with a very um distinct privilege to actually hear uh the reality like this coming from to actually because it opens up things that we did not get to see uh we, you know and here i am let me just be honest i am sitting here thinking about oh all this trauma has caused us to act this way but i don't have a stand in the fight that he just said no he's absolutely correct i mean how do how do i you know how do you know look let's wake up and let's see that the things that we're doing that we don't think anybody is hearing is being heard you know yeah. when i'm gossiping um and i think nobody else is around somebody is around yeah. and it affects so here we are um let's just roll with gossip for a minute can we roll with gossip for a minute so here we are now wow like wow and so here we are in this in this space that says they don't understand what we're talking about anyway. We're talking over their head. So I can go ahead and I can say this. Here's the thing, if it's not nice, maybe we shouldn't just say it at all. I, I, I think if if I hear you correctly, the things that um that were being said doesn't matter what the what the issue is in your house, you know what? Go home <laughs> to your apartment. Have company over and do all your talking, but while you are still on premises, know that you're affecting someone, and know that um, how people, how they hear develops, or let me say it in a very uh, Christian way. Oh no, not a Christian way, a religious way. Oh, the the seeds you sow, <laughs> you know these seeds you sowing. Guess what? Are going to bring harvest. And so I think now we're here at this part because the harvest is, you know, based on um, Mike's um, comments and his perspective, this is the harvest. We're not in church. And if things, if we're going to make things right, or if we're going to, uh, we have to be inclusive and know, here, here's a, a sneak peek. If you didn't know that your gossip was hurting somebody, here you go. Because what just happened in that is that ministry stopped because of this. In other words, you connected with someone. And then the person that you connected with all of a sudden now is a teeter-totter because of people that generally are supposed to be the example, the, the leadership, are displaying something very different. And that is... Hey, I wish this was one of them sessions people can throw in questions because like right now, I feel like I'm at an awe because I've been I've been trying to take care like because the one thing that I think is that God gathers us together. He brings us together. It's a gathering, right? And there's a reason for a gathering. And that is to strengthen one another, not to weaken one another. Who I'll say is that so, most there's People are never above critique and criticism. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I think that um, in all fairness that, you know, how I say to to my people that, you know, I'm in charge of and that I leave is, you know, is what you're about to say adding value. And is what you're about to say intentional enough where it's going to arrive at a place better than where it started. And so if I'm going to critique somebody in the church that hey i might have witnessed or i didn't like or then i didn't see then you have to intentionally know how you can add value to that person telling them something maybe negative and if you don't do that and or if you say that to someone else even it could be in love is that adding value you know and i think that you know not all cultures in church are this way you That's know i've experienced some great churches and only my only um, fault is that you know I'm only a part of the communities that I go to now for a, a very limited amount of time before that my job takes me somewhere else but I have been a part of great um, great communities and, and cultures from the church 
but I've also still seen those same types. Wow. And so, and, and what that means to me or felt for me is that I would have to join a clique to make sure that I wasn't around that. And that didn't make me feel great about being too involved in the church, right? It was like, I'd rather just be a participant. You know, I'd rather show up, go home and do my thing. Um, and so I think that if we as, um, you know, people who love Christ want to be better and more inclusive to people that we have to realize that, you know, you are that example, whether you are perfect or not, and that you should emulate the things that you will try. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be um, an action figure or act to appease someone, but you do have to uh, know that, you know, you could possibly affect someone's life by how you are, you know, in that setting, you know. I, I think I just want you to talk for the whole show because that I am loving this. No, um, never been able to. So first of all, I know that you're grounded. I know that I love listening to you. And I know that every post that I visited, you know, like Montana, um, man, I was, you know, I was so proud of you. You was like, yeah, mom, I'm gonna take you to church. And like, who says that? This is why. I don't worry about him. I just pray for him. But he takes me to his church. And, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm observing and I'm singing because, you know, they have the board, they have the lyrics up. And I've never heard of these songs. I just wait for the rhythm and I just sing. And being brought into his culture, he always knows. He always, you know, found a wonderful church to attend based on content and people. I've been proud of him. And I am to say, so proud of you. I always say this, but I'm always proud of him. And now you can see why. Uh, he is his own man. His mama didn't have anything to deal with that. So I hope that you enjoyed having Michael Williams, Master Sergeant Williams, and daddy and husband on the show with me uh, today. His mother is so proud of him. Yes, she is. And guess what? We'll see you next time on Real Talk. This is Minister J. Renee. God bless you all.